Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today, particularly at this very busy time. Uh, first week back for many, second week back for some schools, I realise, uh, and goodness knows how many other different priorities and things you have at the moment. So if you're to spare 45 minutes for us, uh, it's very much appreciated, and it's great to see you, and, and thank you so much for joining us. For what I'm sure will be a really interesting discussion today, we have a tremendous guest filled with knowledge and experience of speaking to school leaders every day for many years. Um, and the theme of today is about putting you back in control. I think perhaps a little bit like banks really an odd thing to um, to compare schools with but two things that i think schools need certainly in my experience of uh, running schools and working schools for many years are certainty and control and i think those are the two things that perhaps have been in short supply in the last few weeks and months certainty and control well we think and certainly my my guest today thinks it's very much about putting you back in control of your schools and the agenda and the curriculum and so forth. So I'm really delighted uh, that we're gonna have a great discussion today. Um, during the discussion, you'll hear us reference the Pathway Programme from the NHT and Discovery Education. Uh, this is not an entire sales pitch for 45 minutes. Um, it's, a, it's a thought leadership discussion, which I hope you'll find very insightful and reassuring. But you will hear us mention Pathway. And if you'd like to visit the uh, uh, platform, visit the website uh, throughout this discussion or afterwards, please do so. The URL is down there and it will also appear in the chat stream. Uh, similarly, if you'd like to join a discussion on social media, please do using the hashtag the whole teacher and you'll find lots of other uh, people making different comments and uh, uh, enjoying their online chat there. And throughout this discussion too, if you'd like to chat, please click on the old chat button. We're all familiar with these things now and the Q&A button where you can pose a question. And the questions that you post, we will actually be hopefully uh, finding time at the end of our discussion to be posing uh, these questions to our special guest, who is, and I'm delighted to welcome him, Guy Dudley who spent well over a decade working uh, with the NHT, uh, heading up their advice and policy, their advice unit uh, with a big team working, working with him on the phone to school leaders every day. And I have to say, when I was a school leader myself, I wished I'd had the back phone to Mr. Dudley because Guy is a problem solver, a reassuring voice at the end of the phone. And I hope very much that you're there to join us today, Guy. I great certainly to see you. Good it's morning. great to see you. And good morning, everybody. Always reassuring to see that their technology works because one never knows. So Absolutely. it's great to see, um, great to see and hear from you, Guy. Thank you so much again for giving up forty-five minutes of your busy day as well. Always on the phone to school leaders, always preparing the latest updates and policy advice, uh, which is so needed and so welcomed. I know. So we're going to get into some interesting discussions today. Um, perhaps before we get on to the advice hub a fundamental part of the Pathway Programme, which you're leading for us. Um, would you mind just maybe spending a couple of minutes telling us about yourself and your career to date? No, absolutely not. Thanks, Andrew, and good, good morning, everybody, again. Um, well, I, I won't uh, wax lyrical or, or bore people with detail, but perhaps I'll go back to 1997. Um, I've, I've been employed in HR and general management roles, supporting managers and leaders uh, in the voluntary, private, public, and trade union sectors. And that includes 13 years working in the education sector, uh, six years at the DfE, uh, and for the last seven years uh, at the NHT. And in both of those roles, I've advised and continue to advise uh, head teachers, school leaders, uh, school business managers. Um, and Interestingly, Andrew, no one in that whole time has ever called me to say they're having a great day. <laughs> uh, I guess I can summarise. I wish they could and would. Uh, but I guess I can summarise it in three sort of points that, that, that might be helpful for, for the listeners today. And I call them the three Ps. Um, so generally issues are around these three areas. And this is where I've sort of bring some expertise to the table. Uh, the first P is people, uh, whether that's um, a pupil, a member of staff, a parent, a governor, uh, or their employer. And the nature of that is to try and resolve some conflict. Uh, the second P is practice. Um, most people will contact me to try and validate the use and the merits of a particular procedure, process, or professional practice. Uh, and the third and final P is personal. Um, many people in schools are part of that, what I'd call that sandwich generation, 
uh, where they may be experiencing difficulties in their personal life. So personal being the third P, maybe their health, uh, well-being, uh, or their dependents. Uh, many of those working in schools will have children and uh, maturing elderly parents and how they balance those competing demands. So a lot of my time is ensuring that people are safe yeah. uh, in, that, uh, in that sort of respect. So those three Ps, people, practice, and personal. Okay. Uh, that's really how I've spent the last 23 years. And I love that holistic view there, you know, that we don't divorce professional from personal. It, it, it isn't, we are people at the end of the day, and it's very difficult to, we don't, we don't operate in a vacuum, do we? None of us do. We operate in our own reality, in our own context. And yeah, absolutely. It's lovely that you recognize that. I think and I, I would say those three Ps are sort of fairly shared. Um, yeah. there's, there's one that really predominates. Um, yeah. And we forget that you know, head teachers, school leaders, uh, anyone working in a school uh, has a, is a human being and has a personal life. Uh, just like you and I, Andrew. But, you know, they, they need to balance that um, to make sure they're, they're, they're okay for both. They, they, they really do. They have... They really do need to do that, um, not least for the, for the benefit and the sake of the students in front of them and for their families and friends at home too. They all deserve to have the best version of themselves. Um, but it's, uh, it's a message that perhaps needs to be reminded several times, I think, sometimes throughout a year because um, for many of us, it's not about us, is it? It's about, it's about the children. It's about mm. moving the dial, making a difference and bringing benefits to the children. But we, uh, um, as someone said actually on a Pathway course recently, David Gumbrell said it's very difficult to fill other people's cup from an empty cup yourself, mm. which is a really interesting way of looking at it. So, uh, great. So, um, well, look, let's look at the Advice Hub part of the mm. Pathway program. And um, I wondered whether you wouldn't mind spending a couple of minutes just sharing with us your, your vision for what is a really important fundamental part of Pathway, the, uh, the Advice Hub, for which you are series editor. Um, tell us your vision for the Hub and, uh, and perhaps describe its format and scope and some of the intended impact that we hope it's going to have. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I'm really excited about this hub, the advice hub. Um, I mean, my vision for it is, is pretty simple and straightforward and perhaps reflects the title of this webinar, Andrew. Um, it's helping school leaders and everyone working in schools and users of Pathway uh, to be and to stay in control. To be. Uh, it's supporting their still on the vision, supporting their continuous professional development and empowerment yeah. uh, and agency in the job. Yeah. Uh, and it's building their professional capacity uh, mm -hmm. by developing confidence, competence and credibility. Yeah. So that's my vision. Um, but I think control is the key one, which is why we called this uh, particular webinar, putting you back in control. The, the format and scope um, well, that's, again, relatively straightforward. Like lots of things in the Pathway program, it's not complicated. Uh, it is what you'd expect it to be. Um, but the Advice Hub, for, for those new to it, obviously, will be made up of 10 separate parts. Uh, we've called them Advice Tiles uh, that cover the principal areas of school life. Mm. Um, and I'll just quickly run through those so that Thank people you, yeah. can tick them off in their head, if you like. Um, safeguarding, uh, always the number one uh, responsibility for anyone working in a school. Admin and finance, uh, inspections, leadership and governance, curriculum, statutes, policies and regulations, the crunchy stuff. Yeah. Uh, pupil behaviour, uh, which will be quite interesting uh, challenge in the autumn term. Good old human resources. Working with others, which we can touch on uh, in a while, yeah. uh, and the school calendar. Uh, as we know, um, most of the year is timetable, but as you would know uh, as an ex-head teacher, when you look back and reflect on the year, most of the year is taken up with unscheduled events rather than <laughs> scheduled ones. I know, uh, and the, the things that creep up on you when you least expect them as well. <laughs> And, and just in addition to that, we'll have uh, a couple of facilities called the newsletter and my docs sections, uh, where we'll publish more dynamic uh, and emerging news pieces mm. um, and an online facility where documents can be saved 
uh, and called on when they're needed. Uh, and we'll keep the, the, the scope and the format of that all under review uh, and um, make sure it, it contributes to the, the meet the needs of users. And I've, I've had, sorry, I've had the good fortune of uh, reading a lot of the materials that you've been sending, obviously, to us um, that we've been building into the Pathway platform. And I, I, I must say, and I don't wish to embarrass you, but it's, it's beautifully written in a very conversational style. It isn't Thank preachy. You. It's very empowering. And I think that, draw, that draws on the years of experience you've had talking to school leaders, doesn't it? It sounds like you're talking to me. When, when I read it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I tend to write in a very straightforward way. Yep. Uh, you know, people, this isn't fiction. Uh, <laughs> this is very much non-fiction. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, what school leaders want to be able to do is pick up a piece of uh, advice, yep. grab a cup of tea or coffee, yep. uh, read it, and feel confident going into a meeting, for example, or going to a governor's body meeting, or going into an, uh, a difficult, challenging conversation with a member of staff. Uh, having the confidence to do so, um, but I think that I think most people, when they see the advice, will see that it's quite bold. Uh, it's very pragmatic, uh, and it's empathetic as well. Um, just just right. coming back to the final uh, question there, Andrew. The, the sort of the three part, the impact. Yeah. I mean, I just really wanted to run through that very very quickly because I think it is you know it's it's all very well this nice rhetorical description of it, but hopefully uh, the impact is going to be a good one. Yeah. Um, and I just thought of a few words that I'd use to describe it to finish this bit of the conversation. But I think the impact is instant. Mm. Uh, it's online. Uh, it's at your fingertips. Uh, it's available 24 hours a day. So it is instant. It's reliable. Um, it's been quality assured by me and my colleagues at the NEHT. Uh, it's impartial. It's uh, provided without judgment. Yeah. Uh, it's effective in the sense that it covers, it's likely to cover everything you need. Uh, and I would argue that it's cost effective, um, yeah. depending on how you want to divvy the sums and, and numbers up. Um, it's about two pounds a day uh, for each day the school is open. Um, so, you know, I think it's a, an incredibly cost effective resource when looked at in that, uh, in that uh, light. It is. Yeah. No, it's a lovely way to put it. Um, it's essential. I think it's a must have. Certainly if I was a school leader now and it wasn't that long ago that I left um, yeah. to join discovery, yeah. it would be, um, uh, something I wouldn't, I wouldn't just go to when I needed something, obviously I would, but it wouldn't be just that I would actually probably browse as well. And I think the newsletter, um, your, tremendous analogy and you haven't used it yet i don't think your tremendous analogy of the supermarket is such a good one that we have those we've talked about stocking the shelves haven't we with these brilliant pdfs that you produce but there are end of aisles as well end of the shelves aren't there where you're you're there's, there's you're agile enough to be able to notice things that are happening in the world of education at any one time and you can write articles and newsletter pieces about them can't you you can be dynamic like that so absolutely i, I see being proactive and reactive yeah. Um, right. So, uh, you know, uh, I think we can cover the best of both worlds in one, one push of the button. So, uh, back to school. Um, I can only imagine um, what the in-tray must look like for school leaders uh, and teachers right now. Um, my goodness, where do they start? Um, well, where do they start? They haven't stopped right through August, for heaven's sake. We know that. We know that. Whether it's on your knees actually fixing mm -hmm. black and yellow tape, to the uh, to the floor to create one-way systems or or looking at policies and, and updating health and safety policies and things my goodness but how might they prioritize at this unique time i mean how do we stay on the wave with so much how do we list our priorities guy gosh it's difficult isn't it i mean <laughs> uh, there's been sort of three waves if you like yeah there's, yeah. there's the three march the 20th wave where we were yeah. all going along watching the news with a little bit of trepidation mm. uh what's this all mean uh and then of course schools were closed uh as schools uh on the 20th of march there was then this interim period uh where school teachers and rarely has is there a profession that's had to adapt so quickly yeah. and so profoundly yeah. uh as as running a school and then of course there's this post first of september uh wave uh, where, as you said, they're back to school uh, and probably thinking, gosh, my in-tray's 
six months old. Uh, I've done a lot, but there's an awful lot to do. I mean, first and foremost, and, you know, I won't labour this point, but um, I guess, you know, the, the priority for head teachers is to, is to get people back to school, get them into back into routines. Mm-hmm. And that's not just pupils and parents. Um, that's members of staff as well and members of their SLT. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people will be unsettled by some of the media headlines recently, yeah. uh, especially in part, some parts of the northwest of England and the northeast. Uh, where there have been great spikes. So I won't labour that, but, you know, uh, as you know, Andrew, we've got a, a very nice piece uh, on the Advice Hub that will will detail uh, the activities that people may uh, may choose to look at. Um, I think there's a, there's a whole range of other things that they need to do, and they've got to almost to transition from uh, post-COVID, 1st of September, to business as usual. And it's that journey uh, where there's a combination of those two principal activities, aren't there? Uh, Where you've got to get people back into school, get them feel settled, get them back into a routine. But at the same time, if schools are open, and that's what the government have said, um, they've got to be open. And by that, I mean everything that applies to a school applies, whether it's attendance, exclusions, uh, keeping children safe in education. Um, but there are one or two things I'd, I'd highlight here, if I may, mm. um, COVID-19 aside. Mm. Um, I think it's really important that school leaders pay attention to the new keeping children safe in education guidance. It's statutory guidance, which means they must, all people in schools must adhere to it. There haven't been significant changes, but there have been a few fundamental subtle changes that come in on the 1st of September. Um, So if if they haven't yet, my advice is get your head around that very quickly. Uh, I'll put a nice piece on the Advice Hub uh, for that. Um, Thankfully, we will all know that there are no Ofsted inspections in the autumn term, uh, and they've yet to release a date when inspections will be reinstated um there's a new uh, as as you'll know and most people listening well hopefully everyone listening to this uh, webinar will know there's a new part of the curriculum the relationship sex and health education uh, that becomes part of the curriculum from the first of september although schools have got until the beginning of the autumn term uh, sorry summer term next year uh, to implement that Um, I think there's a huge chunk of time that people will need to give to pupil behaviour. Some children, and this is going to be hugely challenging, I think, Andrew. I think some children won't have been at school, uh, in a school routine, in a learning environment that they've been familiar with for a long time, for up to six months. Um, And some children will have been, uh, will be fine a lot of children won't be fine Um, and there'll be huge challenges for pastoral leads, uh, key stage leaders uh, and uh, DSLs, designated safeguarding leads. Um, So I think those are probably the key issues that that head teachers, school leaders will want to get themselves around Um, and also just finally picking up on anything that was left Uh, from March the 20th, if it was left from March the 20th. Uh, And there there may well be things that uh, may have been going along in terms of uh, human resource activity, uh, whether that recruitment or or processes that are sort of, in a sense, thawed out. But uh, I think the first half of this term, it's very much getting people settled, getting the safeguarding and the the pupil behaviour under control uh, and making sure those, those two issues of... Uh, the curriculum uh, and uh, the keeping children safe, getting those nailed uh, in this first six weeks. Well, of course, uh, thank you. And and we know, of course we know, but perhaps others outside education, never having worked in education, may 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 not appreciate that COVID-19 is by no means the only thing on head teachers' minds at the moment. Mm. It is because it should be business as usual in so many other aspects and so forth. And so I wondered whether... Um, you could perhaps give us a reminder of the 
some of those dates and deadlines that we can expect this mm. term mm. that need to be on our radar already? They may already be on people's radar, but just refresh our memory if we could. I hope they are, but you and I both agree. <laughs> it's better to be safe than sorry. It is. What do we uh, need to prepare for? Absolutely. Well, I, I think a lot of, a lot of uh, there's a few issues I'll touch on here. One of the things, of course, that, 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 ocu that traditionally occupy the first six weeks of a half term in the autumn is performance management and pay. That's right. That's right. Uh, when everyone's performance management is done, right. traditionally, uh, although it used to have to be done by the 31st of October, that date is now a flexible date. The government have relaxed that date. But okay. it's still on people's minds. Um, they'll be thinking, well, you know, I only completed six, seven months of the academic year. Yeah. Uh, where does that leave me and where does yeah. that leave my pay? Because right. um, obviously the two are inextricably linked. That's right. Um, I think there's, uh, there's, there's something around free school meals. It's, it's a small point, but again, schools are open. It's business as usual. And those that are entitled to free school meals should be entitled to them from the 1st of September or from when the schools uh, opened. Uh, for business um, we've touched upon the safeguarding um, one or two other things I'll touch on and then I'll, I'll move to a couple of dates the single central record yeah. um, this is where everything related to safeguarding is recorded and it's the law whether we like it or not but it is the law to ensure that is up to date on every single day the school is open um, it's one of the first documents that Ofsted inspectors look at. Um, so I would just ask an appeal to schools to take a look at that and make sure it's up to date. Um, as well as those other safeguarding areas of uh, medical review uh, for, for pupils. Um, pupils have been, well, a lot of pupils have been away for six months. Their medication may have changed. They may not have been in, on medication uh, in March, but they may, now may be on medication. Uh, if they miss a medication dose, uh, again, it's these little details that can uh, run, into, run schools into a little bit of trouble. Um, I, I would say a key date uh, is the census date. Uh, it's a date that's often overlooked uh, by school leaders because it, it happens sort of mid-term, um, this year, um, the, the date that it's launched is the 1st of October, so not far away, a couple of weeks away, uh, and the submission date is the 28th of October. Um, some free advice there for our members. Yep. Uh, or uh, all this. Is. Again, we've got, a, we've got those reminders of all the census dates uh, in the advice hub uh, as well. Um, and just, just finally uh, on, on that, Andrew, there are other things that I think if they're not already on leaders' and schools' checklists, they should be. Um, websites, for example. Uh, it's now law that schools have websites. Uh, they have to be up to date. Um, schools generally have to up to date, update their websites on the 1st of September or in September. Uh, or as soon as practically are, uh, after that date. And of course, budgets, um, making sure that uh, they've captured or asking their school business leaders if they have one um, to make sure they've captured all the catch-up funding uh, for which there are deadlines um, and making sure that all the meetings, all the business usual, usual meetings are in the, air, uh, the diary, uh, especially parents' uh, evenings, which will be uh, pretty important this term, uh, and governing body meetings. But I think the key dates this year, uh, or this term rather, uh, relate to the keeping children safe in education uh, and the census date. Uh, I think if, if they can nail those two, uh, everything else is, is sort of uh, important. Uh, it's in our advice hub, um, but those are the two that I would really encourage schools and school leaders to concentrate on to avoid any challenge down the line that they haven't yet uh, put those in place. Brilliant. Again, I mean, this is what the Pathway Advice Hub is all about. It's, it's, it's keeping us up to date, reminding us of the things ahead so that they don't come as a surprise so that we can stay in control. 
Um, I'm going to ask an impertinent question now, which is a bit cheeky, really, but I'm, I'm intrigued um, about what motivates you personally, Guy. I mean, you've worked with school leaders for all these years. You've been on the phones to school leaders every day for many, many years. And I can, you're a problem solver. I can, I can see that. Um, but I can also see that, obviously, school leaders, uh, the recipients of your advice, would benefit hugely, enormously from that relationship. But I'm intrigued to know how you benefit from this work and what motivates you and what enables you to, to still be so invested and committed in this important job? What drives you? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it can be different answers on different days. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But I'm sure what drives me is, is probably what drives a lot of people in education. Yeah. Um, so it's perhaps the same color of that driver, but, uh, but a different shade. Okay. Um, uh, you'll recognize this. Uh, and every time I accuse a school leader of being one, they laugh, but it's a nervous, defensive laugh when I accuse them of being control freaks. <laughs> of course. And of course. You know, those, um, thank goodness they are, because yeah. we need someone to be in control. Um, absolutely. And I, you know, those working in schools, especially school leaders, love being in control. Um, so one thing I've got in common with them is I do too. <laughs> and that's a great start when I talk to a school leader where we're starting off with the same objective. Um, but if I can resolve some conflict, uh, if I can help remove an obstacle, uh, solve a problem um, that helps those running a school to enable that school to function more effectively and productively, uh, and when I say that, I mean in the bigger picture, in the widest sense, to achieve the aim of preparing children and young people for life beyond the school gates for the next critical stage of their life. Um, that's a great kick. And I think putting people back in control uh, helps schools to be well run. Uh, well run schools produce positive outcomes. Uh, for staff, governors, parents, and more, most importantly, pupils and students. Um, and, and I think for me, a positive experience for school underpins so much more than examination results. Yes, it, does. Um, it produces a future uh, and a well-equipped generation that will help shape the society we all live in and depend on. And my motivation is to make a small contribution to that journey. So uh, no designs on education secretary then? <laughs> <laughs> Just strikes think, me as a perfect fit. I think given the people on this call would agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's too good for politics. Uh, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think the tenure and job security of education secretary is uh, <laughs> to be desired. Yeah, football manager, quite. Absolutely. We better move on. Um, just struck me as uh, the perfect, uh, <laughs> perfect appointment, I would have thought. Um, <laughs> and not that we need a new education secretary, by the way. I wasn't uh, inferring that at all. Um, no. So, well, I tell you what, if p solving people's problems is something that drives you clearly, um, mm. I'm going to put you on the spot now. So let's, let's, should we get on with that? Because we've got a few questions yeah, here absolutely. and we've got a few problems to be solved <laughs> here. So, um, and of course, neither you nor I know what these questions were. So um, yeah, really don't. let's... Let's, uh, let's, let's put that to the test. So I've got a, an interesting one here from Jason. Thank you, Jason. Um, what would your advice be, Guy, for um, advice to parents who refuse to send their children in? We've offered for the parents to come in and see the effective systems and procedures that we have put in place, but they've refused to come in. We're loath to issue fines, but the children whose attendance pre-lockdown was poor anyway um, are obviously missing out on their learning. Gosh, mm. the question. What, what do we do? That is a difficult one because if they're refusing to send them in, yeah. um, you know, the, the, there's not a great deal that can be done yeah. other than to make every reasonable effort, yeah. uh, Jason, um, yeah. to, uh, you know, effectively encourage the parents in, offer them uh, every which way to communicate, whether that's by letter, by um, virtual sort of means like a Teams meeting or a, or a Zoom meeting. Um, obviously, the, the absence would need to be recorded, uh, probably as an unauthorized absence, uh, unless the employer uh, has issued some temporary codes, and so, some have, I know, up and down the country. 
right. sort of COVID-19 right. code. Right. Um, but I think also uh, there's, a, there's a need. Effectively, Jason, what you need to do is cover your back. And I think the way to do that is make every reasonable effort to, to communicate with the parent. Uh, keep evidence of that. Um, I would also inform uh, the LADO, uh, the local authority designated officer, uh, because whilst this is, you've got no evidence at all that this is a safeguarding issue, it might become a safeguarding issue. And I think what you could potentially do is offer the child and the parents some home or flexi schooling. So homeschooling is, name uh, as it says on the tin, schooling at home, um, and whether the parents want to consider that, or possibly flexi schooling where the child attends school on a part-time basis, um, so has part-time teaching at the school and part-time teaching uh, at home. I think the key, though, is to get underneath why they're refusing to send their child in and to respond to it as reasonably as possible and to keep your evidence and to let the authority know, your local authority or academy trust, uh, the local authority would be the admissions body, uh, for that child, so that you're effectively not taking that decision or, or shaping your communication in isolation. You're doing it in a joined up way. Uh, and more importantly, you've got the evidence of offering alternatives to full-time education in schools. And I've written a piece, uh, alternatives to full-time education and about homeschooling and flexi-schooling uh, on the Advice Hub, which will be uh, up and up there when it's launched. Thank you, Guy. Um, that was a really comprehensive answer. We, we have, um, uh, perhaps as one might expect, some similar questions on a similar theme. So let's get through as many as we can um, mm. briefly. So from Paula, thank you, Paula. Uh, and it's linked to Jason's question, actually. If parents are choosing to self-isolate, despite advice that this is not needed, do we have to provide a full remote learning offer? <laughs> Well, if they're choosing to self-isolate, um, no. Um, the law states that uh, you know, schools aren't under any legal obligation to provide uh, a home learning offer. So that's, that's black and white. So I hope that's helpful, Paula. I've got colleagues called Jason and Paula, and if I find out that they're, they're my colleagues, there'll be trouble. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think having said that, I think the same answer almost applies that, um, you know, whilst you're under no obliga legal obligation, Paula, to provide home learning, uh, again, what you could do is write to the parents, and I would write to them rather than email them or, uh, or ring them, so you've got evidence uh, in a letter, to offer them alternatives, uh, which again could fall under those, uh, the banners that I've just described to Jason. Um, sort of home, homeschooling, uh, flexi schooling, uh, uh, learning. We have a, a, another quite similar question, actually. Um, interesting one from Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Um, how would one manage um, if a parent does not wish for her child to follow the COVID safety measures the school has put in place and has made this clear to the head teacher? How do, right. how do you manage that scenario? Well, I think ultimately the buck stops with the head teacher, yeah. and if the head teacher has put in place reasonable measures yeah. to protect the health and safety, uh, they would have to uh, ask that child not to attend school uh, unless they were prepared to comply. Uh, I think as long as that head teacher is is satisfied that those measures are reasonable, and the, the sort of the legal parlance is. Uh, you're pursuing a reasonable action to achieve a, yeah. a legitimate aim. That's fine. The, the legitimate aim is to provide a health and safe working and learning environment yeah. for pupils and for parents and teachers um, and, and anyone else staff. Um, and if a child or a parent, probably, on behalf of the child is refusing, um, then you're, you're entitled to exclude that child. I'm not suggesting you exclude them but you're entitled to offer them uh, an alternative to coming into the school if they're not prepared to come into the school on those reasonable conditions yeah, uh, you have first, a responsibility to everybody don't you absolutely and as, as i think everyone knows andrew you're you know anyone from uh, anyone in a in a leadership role in school their first duty 
is to provide a healthy and safe environment. It is. Uh, because until you do, yeah. children can't learn. Um, and children oh, we, have, we have a similar scenario, actually. And gosh, I, this, is, this is worrying, but I can, I can so imagine how this has happened. This is from Abby. Thank you, Abby, for your question. We have clear entry and exit points onto the school grounds, but we have a parent who refuses to follow those rules and is becoming abusive on school grounds. What would you suggest we do? My goodness. I can right. it's, yeah, I mean, I, I dealt with a lot of these back in March. Uh, when we had a lot of parents who just refused to comply. Um, yeah. I mean, I, th I think ultimately, uh, and, and we've got um, no surprise here, Andrew, but uh, you know I've written a piece for the Advice Hub on dealing with abusive visitors. Uh, yeah. And I did that because I knew these, these issues would arise. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think, first of all, you have to play softball and ask them politely. Again, it's about covering yourself and asking them to comply. Uh, secondly, uh, you can take a, a whole load of actions against the teacher, uh, sorry, against the parent rather, um, if they don't comply. Um, and one of those would be to, um, you know, everything from a, a, a legal injunction, uh, a geographical injunction, right through to a parental ban. But I think like lots of measures head teachers want to take, they want to try the uh, placatory, uh, conciliatory approach first. Yeah. So my advice would be to draft a letter, write it to the parent, uh, invite them in to talk. Uh, ultimately, you've got to take control of this situation. But more importantly, warn them of the consequences. Um, you know, this is what a lot of people fail to do. They, they tell someone what they should do. Uh, and what they must do, but they fail then to tell them what the consequences are of not doing that. Um, so ultimately, you can call the police if they do become abusive or, or contact your local constabulary and ask for a, a PCSO, a, a police constable um, uh, to, to uh, a community support officer uh, to come and, and give you a, a sort of, if you like, make sure you're on their beat uh, at particular times right, of the yeah. day. But that's, that has worked in some areas of the country, and it's been particularly effective. Um, it's a great deterrent just to see someone in the vicinity. Um, yeah. But again, we've got a piece on that in the, uh, on the advice of dealing with the visitors. But play, play softball first. There's plenty of legal uh, remedies uh, at your disposal, uh, Abby, to, to, to yeah. make that go away. Gosh, um, thank you so much, Guy. Um, we're running out of time. We, we have run out of time, really. But um, I think we could have made this two hours long, to be honest, and we, we still wouldn't have got through all the questions. So thanks, everybody, for, for posing those questions. We're going to collate those. My colleagues and I are going to collate those questions. And uh, I'm sorry to put you on the spot like this, Guy, but hopefully if you have a window of opportunity, perhaps to drop a few lines in response to those questions, that would be great. Um, Absolutely. I'm, knowing you as I do, I'm sure you will. So, so we'll collate the, the questions that we haven't, got time for uh, we haven't got on to and we'll uh, we'll get some answers back to you thank you everybody for joining in that discussion and guy thank you so much for giving up your time today um, okay. it's a real pleasure and a privilege for me to work with you on the advice hub i'm really enjoying it and wearing my head teacher's hat and teacher's hat as i do um it's difficult to take it off really um i can really see the true value of the advice you're presenting and the friendly way in which you're presenting it so thanks ever so much uh, i hope you go and have a well-earned cup of tea and, uh, and enjoy the rest of your day, Guy. Great to see you again. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you, everyone, and uh, goodbye and good luck over the autumn term. All Thank the best. Thank you very much indeed. Anybody Bye. who has the time now to stay, please do. You're welcome to join us um, for the last five minutes when I'm just going to give you a, a sneaky peek at um, uh, the platform of Pathway itself, which we're building. Um, it's launching in schools in a couple of weeks' time, and um, you can actually pre-order it now uh, if you go to our website, which is in the chat stream, um, and we'll present it again at the end of this. You can go to the website, uh, the Discovery Education website, and get the order forms and pre-order it, or at least register your interest to find out more. Um, but I'm really excited to share this program with you. It's come together really well. I've been very, very pleased. Um, as many uh, on the call will know, if you've heard me speak before, the, unique, the uniqueness of Pathway is the fact that it very positively blends professional and personal development together. No longer are we just offering CPD, 
we're very cognizant of the fact that on the receiving end of a CPD course is a, is a human being um, with their own personal development needs, uh, their well-being needs as well, their motivational needs and so forth. And uh, when one looks in the round holistically at, uh, at effective teaching, one realizes that it's about the whole person. Uh, it isn't just about um, the, uh, the professional development, if you like. It's about giving you back your agency, which can so easily be lost in the overwhelm of accountability that surrounds us. Uh, it's very easy for us to forget that we've got this. We have the skill set that we need and we have the confidence to do this. And when we look at personal and professional development together, especially focusing on our well-being, then I think uh, we're able to stay, uh, to stay in control, as Guy would, as Guy would put it. Um, and with that in mind, I set ourselves some key objectives. And you'll see there are three words that are jumping out there um, to enable teachers, the, give them the opportunity to orientate their careers in terms of what drives them, what really motivates them. What is it in this uh, eclectic mix of tasks that we do as teachers, what is it that really drives us? And then to set our goals for our career, especially at this moment in time when we're looking at performance management targets and goals for the, for the year ahead, it's a good idea to orientate ourselves to really keep an eye on those long-term goals when those short-term needs uh, and priorities uh, overwhelm us sometimes, it's good to keep our sense of direction. And then to use a, a huge, massive suite of different online courses to navigate our way to, to success, to navigate our way to where we want to get to. And importantly, to have that reflection time, professional and personal reflection to pause, admire the view, reflect on the achievements we've had and the achievements that we're about to make. So that, that important pausing time is, uh, is often neglected, I think. So we've, we, that's a fundamental part of Pathway. And we give you the tools in order to do that, to reflect, orientate your career, use the navigation tools to get there and pause to admire the view, if I may say. Those are the three fundamental elements of Pathway you'll see there. Uh, it's an online, entirely online, precisely so that you can work through this at your own pace and time. On, on an evening with a glass of wine, on a Sunday morning after you've taken the dog for a walk, whenever suits you. It doesn't have to be at a set time with everyone else. It's bespoke to you. And every unit, every course throughout this whole Pathway program has reflection questions which you are encouraged to answer in free text in your own way. You cannot get it wrong. It's about what you think. It's about how you feel. And it's about the steps you wish to take to make things even better and sustainable for you. It's a marathon, not a sprint, but it's punctuated by frequent sprints, isn't it? But it's having your eye on the long-term aims and having your eye on your own well-being, which is not a self-indulgence, I don't think. I think you matter and your health and mental health and well-being matter as much as your professional currency and your capital, if you wish to stay in the job, and I hope you do. Um, these are the three corners, if you like, the three parts of the Pathway program. Uh, and I'm going to be telling you a little bit, just a little bit more detail about each of those main elements, starting with orientation then. We have a guide to motivation, which includes your own motivation plan, where you'll be encouraged to chart your motivation. It's a dynamic thing. It's agile. But uh, finding out much more about the nature of motivation and what motivates you will hopefully be very helpful for you in your, uh, in your career to enable you to flourish and to stay ahead and to stay energized. Skills audits both for teacher standards and for leadership competencies that we've recognized using a group of expert leaders and uh, recruiters. We've recognized some, some leadership competencies and skills that you can uh, rank yourselves against, both as an, as an aspiring teacher and as a practicing teacher and leader, aspiring leader now. Uh, these are self-assessment statements and so forth, which you can come back to time and time again, if you wish. Um, they would form part of the discussion, perhaps, at your performance management goals, but they're not, they're not tasks that you've been set. You're in control. You're in the driving seat, and you can choose what you wish to share with your line managers. But self-assessments, I think, can be very helpful, actually, uh, to make sure that you retain that self-efficacy and confidence. And the career map, where you can plot both uh, not only your professional goals that you'd like to secure, the roles that you'd like to have in the coming years, but what motivates you, what interests you, and your health and well-being goals, too. Um, and then we have a suite of uh, online continuous professional empowerment. I've always called it CPE because it's about empowering you rather than just developing your professional knowledge. And a huge, great range of different online courses, uh, a real eclectic mix. And I'm going to share that with you in a moment. 
We hope very much to be certifying these uh, in a range of different ways once all the content is now finished. We're now able to share it. We're having very positive discussions with a number of universities to see if we can get the content aligned with uh, master's programs to enable you to notch up to 60 credits towards a master's program, which obviously you would pay for separately, but you would be double bubbling the work, if you see what I mean. Uh, and we've had some tremendous conversations with universities already, which I can't wait to continue with, the, with those conversations in the, in the weeks ahead. So, uh, Definitely worth watching that space. Um, that was always an intention from the very beginning to have the accreditation piece. But obviously, it's difficult to accredit it until it's up and running. But those conversations are happening now. And we hope it's an aspiration that we have to align those with the NPQs as well, the new NPQs that are coming out. And discussions are, are underway with that. And of course, the online community is a very important part of Pathway. Every film that you watch uh, within those programs, those courses, you can respond with your own, uh, share your own comments, read other people's comments, and really be part of that, that, uh, that movement, that whole teacher movement, that community. And there'll be regular webinars like this one, uh, very regularly every term, in-house, in-service for Pathway users. Um, this is one of the last two or three, I think, that we're doing outside Pathway. From then on, these webinars will be within Pathway. Uh, and then the reflection piece as well, which is a, a hugely important part of, uh, of Pathway. The Advice Hub is there because I think it's very much about your well-being, having these problems solved and having a voice on the end of the phone like guys does uh, wonders not just for your professional skills, but also for your professional, for your personal development and your well-being. So that's why the Advice Hub is very much in reflection, give you time to pause, read the policies, the, new, the newsletters, the FAQs, uh, frequently asked questions and so forth. I think that's an all, all goes to serve towards supporting you in the post. And the well-being program is at the very heart of this program. Running through it like a stick of rock is this program uniquely written for us by Professor Tim O'Brien, Dr. Dennis Guiney. I had the good fortune to film many films with them and uh, look at the reading materials that they've now finished. And it is sensational. It is so empowering and so insightful. They, they will hopefully teach us all so much more about our own well-being and the importance of critical reflection and even encourage you to run your own mini uh, research project in your school to support not just your well-being, but the well-being of others really insightful program and i'm very proud of that um, so 20 courses in this first wave with uh, a, a fantastic selection of expert practitioners still very much in post in various different ways um, supporting you with those thought leadership pieces around uh, generic items to do with leadership but also for teaching and learning too a whole range of different uh, courses for teaching and learning as well as leadership with some experts and really engaging uh, very human people, if that makes sense. They're very authentic, very honest, sharing with you what motivates them and how they've managed to stay so committed in their post for such a long time. Um, and great fun to be with. All filmed in roundtable discussions and interviews and discussions with me, um, rather than uh, a face staring at a screen, lecturing you, telling you how to do it on the assumption that you don't know how to do it. That isn't what the Pathway Programme is about at all. It's about celebrating and sharing your success and achievement and, uh, and keeping you invested in this important profession. Um, each course is divided into units, you'll see there, and every unit has different activities where you watch a film, every unit has a film and a thought leadership piece uh, with lots of questions for your reflections. They're not right or wrong answers, not multiple choice. They're free text where you can write uh, a diary entry for your own reflections and how you feel and your thoughts in response to what you've watched and what you've read. And you can keep coming back to those throughout the year, every year. And these are some sneaky shots of the actual platform itself. I'm delighted, absolutely delighted to share these with you. Um, I think it's looking terrific. This is the landing page of the program. You'll see the main sections at the top, orientation, navigation, and reflection. And I'll just very quickly, we're running out of time, obviously we've gone over, but just to share some of the screens with you. I think it's a really nice place to be. It's a lovely place to actually visit and to spend time in where you'll be updating your own reflections and so forth working in, uh, in partnership, in proud partnership with our friends and partners at the NHT who have been so supportive. They recognize, absolutely recognize the importance of offering personal development as well as professional development. It's about you and your pathway through to success in, in this flourishing career that you have, keeping you on track um, and staying on track. So these are just some of the glimpses, um, and I'm really pleased with how it's uh, shaping up. The orientation section is, a, is a, a marvelous place to begin, looking at the motivation guide and the skills audit, moving into the navigation section and the reflection section. 
And these are, this is just one quick example of some of the courses that we have. Every course has a whole range of different films and leadership pieces. You can see on the top left-hand corner how you very easy, efficient navigation through it. Each circle is shaded. It goes colored once you've completed it. So you know whereabouts you are. You can get there back to it very quickly and get to those reflection pages where you enter your responses. And you can see those questions are not right or wrong answers, uh, questions. They are, they're open questions. They're not closed. And they're personal to you to reflect on, uh, on your own career and perhaps even your own experience as a child in school, which is all perhaps influencing ourselves as a teacher and leader today. Um, very human. This motivation plan is based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and we've turned it into an actual plan which you can contribute to and keep coming back to as you monitor your own motivation in the job really important part and understand what motivates others around you and speak to them in the language of their motivators skills audit there as i've mentioned um, an all-important career map to plot your career goals and your health and well-being goals and your motivation goals there's tim o'brien uh, it's been an absolute delight to work with tim many people will be familiar with tim he's very well known um, uh, fascinating expert with his writing partner, Dr. Dennis Guiney, who's also uh, worked in the field of well-being and uh, psychology and uh, uh, educational psychology uh, for many, many years. Um, and of course, we've heard from Guy today, the Advice Hub, which is uh, uh, controlled by Guy. He's a senior editor for that. Uh, and I shall be visiting that regularly. Those are just some of the tiles that we have in the Advice Hub. And if you click on those tiles, you'll get to an enormous range of PDF documents where you can, and they'll be updated all the time. Guy is forever sending me documents every day. I, uh, I see another big batch uh, of, uh, of stock for the shelves, as we say, of uh, very uh, recently written, topical, uh, very insightful documents. Uh, and then the all important dashboard, which I think is a first actually pathway offers you a dashboard, which shows you the investments, your investments in yourself. And obviously I can't show you here, but on the actual platform itself, you'll see uh, how you're progressing through the courses, the certificates and badges that you earn when you progress through those different courses uh, and your motivation uh, plan and the results from your skills analyses, your skills audits. And of course, an all important shortcut to that uh, brilliant place, the advice are powered by the NAHT. So all in all, um, a really unique and holistic program, an integrated program of a whole range of different services will help you to orientate your career goals, navigate your way to success, and reflect. remember to reflect on your achievements along the way. Next week, we have a webinar um, where I'm actually going to be interviewed by my friend and colleague, Phil Birchinall, Senior Director here at uh, Discovery, Senior Director of uh, Immersive Learning here in, in Manchester, in our northern hub. Uh, and we'll be having a good chat about um, the reasons why we've designed Pathway the way we've designed it. We both have nearly half a century of teaching between us. And uh, I'll be sharing some of, the, um, some of the joys of working with this amazing mix of experts along the way. So look out for that. Um, many more, and we'll take lots of questions on Pathway then. And just a few days after then, the program will be launched itself uh, later this month, which is a really exciting time. So find out much more about Pathway in the meantime by visiting the, uh, the URL at the bottom there. And I know my colleague Bobby has been posting that in the chat as well. So you can find out more, register your interest or even pre-order if you wish. The order form is there ready for you to order it for yourself and your staff. Thank you very much indeed for, for listening and for sticking with us on such a busy time of the year. I do hope that you enjoy the rest of the week and I hope very much that you have a well-earned rest and some downtime this weekend. And all being well, we'll see you next week. Thanks very much indeed for watching.